So now that we're pros with how proteins are actually synthesized, how we go from, remember, DNA to mRNA to an actual polypeptide, an amino acid chain, <coughs> uh, it's time to play the what-if game again, uh, because we know now how we produce this protein from these sets of instructions. However, uh, and we know that we end up with these properly folded proteins, but we're left with, a, uh, yet again, another question. Could there ever be problems or mistakes uh, with this process? Could there ever be a mistake uh, that would cause a mess up in our ending product in our protein? And I think you know the answer to that according to our, our uh, agenda here. And we're about to look at what are called mutations. Now, just a quick warning here. Uh, thanks to Hollywood, the term mutant and mutation uh, has erroneously been thrown about and implies that uh, there can be a mutation in which you grow a third leg so you can run faster or maybe I have eyes that, I don't know, can shoot lasers out of them. That's just baloney. Uh, here what we're going to see is that mutations simply are small changes in sequences of bases that lead to uh, changes potentially in, in proteins which, of course, as we know, proteins determine our phenotypes, so mutations can lead to changes in phenotypes, but nothing as drastic as growing a third leg or wings or gills or something like that. We're talking on a small scale here. So uh, these mutations really essentially all they are just, and, and the key word here, random changes. Uh, they're not, it's not um, overseen as though someone has changed it and said, ah, let me turn this thymine into a cytosine. Uh, totally random, and we'll look at causes later on. In DNA sequences that occur, as this is usually these mistakes happen when DNA replicates itself. Uh, think of you trying to copy down a sentence uh, and you mistakenly misspell a word. That's really what this is akin to. Um, note that it could also be, be during transcription. Some of the um, when we're copying our gene onto mRNA, there could be mistakes there as well, but we're going to focus primarily on uh, mutations in DNA because those have the long-term problems, long-term effects. Uh, and as we'll see, it may or may not lead to changes in amino acids that ultimately were coded for. And we'll take a look at that. We'll try several together. So uh, we change the amino acids, we can change our protein in the end, which may or may not have uh, lead to problems. So let's take a look at some of these. There are a couple of basic types um, that we want to examine. First one's the easiest. Uh, if we look at that, a substitution. Now think about if yours truly, ugly Mr. Bentley, is out sick. Uh, they would then bring in a substitute teacher, someone to fill in my place, but they are not me. Uh, they're not as weird as me. They're not as ugly as me. They're just not me. Uh, and really, essentially, we are going to substitute not one teacher for another. We're going to substitute one base for another, uh, accidentally substituted for correct base. So if we look at an example here, this is where it gets interesting. In this example, here is an mRNA uh, molecule that codes for a particular specific short protein, methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, glycine, and our stop codon. So it's a very, very short protein in this case, only four amino acids long. Now, if we play the what if game, there are some ways we can substitute uh, different bases here. And if you look in this next to last codon, which should be GGC, uh, there's a mistake originally in the DNA, so that this codon now becomes GGU. And if we look at that, and we look on our wheel of codons, which we'll do a little later on, uh, we can see that all the first three amino acids are stay the same. There's no change there. In our fourth amino acid, where our codon was GGC, glycine, we're in luck. GGU actually codes for glycine as well. So in this case, there's no effect on the amino acid sequence. There was a mutation. There was a change. But luckily, due to what's called the wobble effect, uh, GGU codes for glycine as well. So this person with this mistake in that gene can still make the proper protein. So let's take a look uh, now down at, at this second column, what's called uh, missense. Uh, in this case, you can see what has happened uh, if we jump back a bit. Um, in this codon, still focusing on our next to last one, where it was originally GGC, which remember in our DNA would have been CCG, there was a mistake. 
uh, what they've done, they've changed that, mutated that first base, uh, was changed to a T. CG. So in that case, this mistake here, this thymine, led to an adenine in our mRNA. So this codon now, AGC, codes for a totally different protein. If we look this up in our wheel, serine instead of glycine. Now notice we still have methionine, we still have lysine, we still have phenylalanine, but in this case, we have changed our protein. By changing that amino acid, uh, it changes the protein slightly. It might change the shape of the protein and therefore change the functioning, the properties of the protein. So this is, as we said, what is called missense. A little different. And now in our last uh, example of a substitution, nonsense, this is really drastic. Uh, in this case, we're focusing on our second codon. It was AAG, therefore the DNA was prior to that was TTC. That's how we copied it to opposite bases. Now in this case, there was a mutation where accidentally an A was copied into the DNA, so it's ATC. Now if we uh, convert that, transcribe that to mRNA bases UAG, we can see that in our wheel, UAG unfortunately codes for stop. It's not even an amino acid. So in this case, we don't even manufacture, it's total nonsense. We don't even make a proper functioning protein. And in many times, this case, uh, this last example, would be, uh, for example, why someone has genetic disorders such as sickle cell anemia, uh, cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs disease, etc. All of those genetic disorders we had looked at uh, when we covered genetics. But in any, at any rate, in each of these three cases, right here, right here, and right here, we have a substitution. Uh, the only thing we're doing is accidentally putting an incorrect base in which you can see sometimes has no effect, sometimes have a small effect, and sometimes is really detrimental to our well-being. Bad, bad, bad. So with that being said, with the substitution, let's go ahead and look at uh, the other type of mutation, uh, which again is a change in bases, but it's, it's a little bit different. In this case, we're going to either insert or delete a base. Now here we're not just swapping out one base for another. We're literally putting in extra bases or accidentally taking out bases. Now knowing what you know about protein synthesis, we can see that that's probably going to lead to some some troubles there. So a base, uh, we can see here I messed up in my typing, accidentally added or left out of a code. So let's use that same example again. You can see sometimes it's called to us a frame shift mutation. So if we uh, once again go back and we look at that same example that we had utilized before, uh, up here is our original protein. Now you can see in this case, um, they have inserted an extra uracil. We still have AUG, AAG, but you can see at the location right in here, accidentally, the enzyme, uh, has inserted either DNA polymerase into the original gene or RNA polymerase into the uh, copy of the gene, has inserted an extra uracil. And remember, we have to. We do not have a choice. When we read these, we have to read them three bases at a time, uh, which can be a little bit of a problem. Uh, because now we can see that instead of AAG for lysine, we now have UAA big change. This is a stop codon, so you can see we actually, this doesn't even make any sense. It does not manufacture a protein. Uh, in a similar fashion, in our next example down here, a little bit later down the line, we go all the way down to our third codon, which was previously U, 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 which is phenylalanine. In this case, uh, they have uh, deleted a uracil, which causes everything from that point on to shift back this way. So now we read it as UUG, which is leucine. And notice one really nasty thing about these insertions or deletions, why we call them frame shifts, is because it changes our reading frame. Everything from the uh, mutation on downstream is changed, is altered. All of the amino acids that occur after that. Uh, which is pretty bad. And you can even see that in some extreme cases, we can even insert or delete uh, entire 
three nucleotide chunks at a time, uh, which again would change everything from that point. Uh, where we'd be missing an amino acid, which will change our protein. We still have the same amino acids that follow, but you can see we've totally altered that by removing key components. We're missing a lysine in this case. So at any rate, whether we're substituting or inserting or deleting, we're changing potentially our protein, which as you can see from those examples, can be uh, not always a good thing. Um, and to simplify that, really, just think of it as though we are uh, reading messed up sentences, really. Uh, like in this, using regular words here, uh, the fat cat ate the red rat. Three words at a time, excuse me, three letters at a time. Um, but focusing on this H here, what about if we accidentally removed that H? We still have to read them three letters at a time. Tef atka atta tet her edrat. <laughs> you say that out loud, you have people staring at you, looking at you like you have three heads. It makes no sense whatsoever. So this really is a, a simple example of, of how powerful an insertion, or in this case, a deletion can be. Uh, in this case, what about if we accidentally, as we had mentioned with insertion, I put uh, an extra H in there. Everything's fine up until where that mutation is. The fat cat ate his ear. I can't even read that. Everything from that insertion or deletion downstream is messed up, which is bad. So to end with, though, what would cause these mutations? I mean, because they are random. How often do they occur? What, what's going on with them? I mean, we can make a list of, remember we had talked about cancer. Uh, there's some nasty causes. So um, we can see here that you can have environmental causes. There may just simply be mistakes by enzymes, although luckily they do have the ability to proofread and cut out those mistakes, usually during DNA replication and, as we said, sometimes during transcription. Uh, and, and we do have to be lucky, or we do have to remember, rather, we can be lucky as well because sometimes mutations, as we saw, can have no effect. For example, take a second here and use your R or our uh, wheel, and we can see that CCC, if we accidentally were to mutate that to CCA, we're in luck. CCC codes for proline, CCA codes for proline. So in the end, we really just have to be able to continue to transcribe and translate the genes and play out the scenarios and actually see what happens. Is there an effect on the protein or is there not? Uh, because as we said, sometimes they can be harmful. Sometimes, eh, no effect. And we're going to see, later on down the road, we'll ask ourselves in our next unit with evolution, could a mutation ever be beneficial? Could it benefit the organism? But we'll save that final question for another day. That's all on mutations. Now it's time for us to start practicing these guys and see if we can master them.